The Nerd Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Morning class, and welcome back to episode six. I forgot the number six. We're gonna keep going anyway. Episode six of the Nerd Academy Movie Club. I am your host, Jared Bachman Stubbs. Good God, I missed that music so much. And joining me, as always, we have the one, the only, the new guy, Devin Ormel. The music is back. The music is back. My most. It's so beautiful. It's per- elegantly crafted. Describes us beautifully. I'm so happy it's back. Episode six is going to be a doozy. Yes, it is. Devin, we are beginning <sighs> Zack Snyder month. <laughs> um, what, and a, uh, what a what month a tough... it's going to be. <sighs> Devin, you got, you got some figures for us on today's episode of A Man of Steel. So, guys, Man of Steel was released June 14th, 2013, with a budget of around 225 million US dollars. And the global box office is 779 million, a quick 550 in profit. Not bad for an opening debut in what would be called the DC Cinematic Universe. Yes. Also, uh, the film received a 7 out of 10 on IMDb. It has a 56% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Very appropriate. The movie is directed by Zack Snyder. The story is by our beloved Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer. The film stars Henry Cavill, Michael Shannon, Amy Adams, Kevin Costner, Diane Keaton, and Lawrence Fishburne, to name a few. And uh, yeah, this movie's a bit of a mess. Just to say, start out, Frank. Let's be honest (laughs) with the audience. Let's be honest with each other. Um... I adored this movie when it came out in 2013. I was 12 years old. I thought it was going to be like, we're going to get the Justice League. Like, they're finally catching up to Marvel. Everything's going to be right in the world. I even loved this movie in 2018 when I forced my then girlfriend to watch it with me at the time. I was just like, do you not like appreciate like how beautiful everything is? And <sighs> unfortunately, how beautiful it is isn't the only part about making a film. There's also things like character development and acting and and storytelling and the overall narrative and not having plot holes or pissed off fans just to just to tip of the iceberg for you well i will say i as somebody who has kind of a controversial pick for their favorite star wars movie i'm not necessarily worried about pissing off fans I think if this movie had something to say about Superman that upset fans in a certain way, that wouldn't necessarily have been a bad thing. It's the fact that the movie takes itself so aggressively seriously and has that air of pretentiousness that Zack Snyder kind of has sometimes especially with his comic book properties and fundamentally does not understand Superman as a character. Um, I was in a similar boat to you. I thought I liked man of steel. I thought it was a movie that I, I liked that. I was like, yeah, I have X, Y, Z problems with it, but on the whole, I enjoy it. I thought I liked man of steel in the same way. I like Batman V Superman but it was less, I know it's bad, but I love it. And I know it's meh, but I enjoy it. And came away from it kind of going, oh, wow. 
I kind of really don't like this movie. And I, if there is one thing I can, if there's, if there's been one audio commentary so far that we have done that I will like, that I will like happily pitch to somebody who's considering the $5 tier on the Patreon. It's the man of steel one because Devin and I went on a personal journey and at about the halfway point of the movie, both kind of went, I don't think I like this movie at all. <laughs> like it just kind of dawned on us that we were like, this is terrible. This is just bad. I think I, I don't know. I put on Twitter that uh, Alex of High Top Films, phenomenal YouTube channel, great video essays, does a lot of cool stuff covering superhero movies. Um, absolutely subscribe to his channel if you're not already. You know we're small potatoes shouting out big potatoes. He's he's already massive and amazing, and he deserves that following. He has done a lot of videos talking about the MCU Spider-Man that I vehemently disagree with. I like I like all of his content even though there's a lot of stuff I very much disagree with from it. However, I put on Twitter, I think I understand how he feels about Spider-Man Homecoming now. Because the title of that video was, not the title, but like kind of like the onus of the video was that Homecoming is a good movie, but a bad Spider-Man story. And I disagreed with him. And I still do on the Spider-Man front. But I came away from Man of Steel going, like, as a movie, I think it, I still think it's fine. But I realized how much I dislike it because of how it handles Superman. No, I hear you. We get a very one line at a time. One, no disrespect to Henry Cavill. I've seen him in other things, and I've really enjoyed him. I'm sure a lot of this is the script. I'm sure a lot of this is Zack Snyder's what he wanted from the show or in the movie. But all you have is Superman delivering one-liners for so much of this film. And it's we don't get to see too many important details of his ideology. We don't get to see how he really feels and believes about being the figure of Superman. We don't, I don't even feel so, I don't even feel connected to Superman by the end of this movie. And it certainly doesn't help that he's got all of like 40 some lines in BVS and like obviously what happens at the end of that movie. And now we're looking at recasting rumors or rebooting rumors rather. Oh, that is, the, the reboot stuff is not a rumor at this point. That is, dead to rights like they are doing a superman reboot there's no confirmation on who's gonna be in the cape yeah it's not the money's on it not being henry cavill it's not gonna be henry cavill man it's just <sighs> although i'm stoked for jj abrams to be a part of that project we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about this movie and this movie i don't know you're right from a superman angle it's very misunderstood I think that the, what they wanted, like Nolan wrote this movie right after The Dark Knight Rises, and you can feel it in that universe. It takes itself seriously, but you also got to learn so much about Bruce and Batman throughout that trilogy and throughout this opening movie. Sure, we get the flashback. Sure, we get to see what he's been through. But as far as like who he is today, it feels so confused. And I get it. He's finding himself, but it does. It doesn't feel confused in this, that sense. It feels confused as to what his whole like purpose is. Obviously, judging him on what he does and not what he says. And what he does is he like he rises to the occasion. He saves the day. But just because he did it in like a cinematically glorious fashion does not mean that I'm gonna walk out of that theater in love with this new version of Superman that's supposed to carry the Justice League and carry a franchise and be this sort of figurehead. And it doesn't do that. It feels it feels rushed. It feels no, it feels slow as hell at some parts. And like with his family, you had said in the audio commentary that every iteration of Clark in the comics where both of his parents are alive is just better or on film, just better. 
And for the most part, I can't disagree with you because Pa Kent, is he right that... <laughs> <laughs> the deep sigh is so is, emblematic of everything in this movie. Is he right that the world would freak out if there was a Superman? Sure. Is he right fearing for his son at 13, 14 years old, whenever the bus incident happens, that they're going to take him away or do experiments on him or just like it's going to be the end of him and his son's relationship? Sure. But like, it feels like it takes so long for them one, one of them to communicate some sort of positivity to just his very being here. Everything is so dreary and fearful and negative and not, not so much as you are a blessing, you are a symbol of hope, you are beautiful even. It's just, I don't know. Ma Kent delivers better as he's an adult and we get to see some of their relationship. It's just a lack of, I don't know, you're right. The movie takes itself so seriously that it has to like address all these world, real world problems. But I think you could have addressed the real world problems and built like a courageous, hopeful, dutiful Superman. I, what you were saying just there were like, the, the, the way the story handles the concept of there being a Superman. That's almost where my, like that, that's almost, that is exactly where all of my problems here lie. And yeah, I'm watching man of steel in 2021. So I live, I'm, I live in, and I am talking about this in a post injustice post Brightburn, post the boys, post every other story that goes what if superman was a dick whether it is actually clark kent call l of krypton being the dickish superman or if it's a piece of shit like homelander and the boys i have gotten so much of the same goddamn story of superman being this like insecure psychotic M merciless brutal tyrant who kind of pisses in the wind at the whole concept of being a symbol of hope and good and peace so coming back to man of steel the last time we really got to see superman on his own trying to do his own thing the fact that this movie is just so rooted in emo superman it really, really frustrates me. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of seeing this version of Superman. I want to see Spangly outfit and, you know, the cape and, you know, truth, justice in the American way. You know, it's like that clip in Superman and Lois. He's picking up the car. Cool outfit. Thanks. My mom made it for me. That's what I want to see. I want to see a story about hope. I want to see a story about being better, about doing better, about showing people we can all be better showing people. We can all be a little bit more like Superman. And we're left with this dichotomy where the best Superman movies are either stuff like the Richard Donner stuff, which isn't bad by any means. They're just clearly a product of the seventies and not massively appealing to most audiences right now. Or we're left with stuff like The Iron Giant or My Hero Academia that somehow manages to tell a better story about Superman than a fucking Superman movie. Yeah. You know, I, and again, like, no, and I don't, I never want to be like, you know, make it like there'd be like disrespect that the people who made this movie, they poured their heart and soul into it. And all of that is all well and good. And I mean that truly. Um, but this is gonna. This is a critical look at the at the movie. A critical look at the art, and I I do feel as though there is a welcomed, I don't want to say antagonism, but like challenge there. Whenever you have Zack Snyder saying the shit he says, <laughs> well, you know, again, I I am called to DC fandom where he was talking about how. 
You know, if you liked the, the you know, Justice League, then Justice League isn't for you because it's not a Saturday morning cartoon. I'm offended by that. I'm really, I personally really put off by that. You know, I there's a part of me that is being practically told because I don't want a Superman who has this like weird moral issue with donning the cape. That, you know, there's this level of, well, should I do it? Should I this? And, you know, the, 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 the messages that are imparted onto him by John and Martha Wayne or Kent, <laughs> we'll get to Martha Wayne in the next one. Jesus. Um, I stand by Martha, by the way. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe, maybe the audio commentary will be the day I your say words I again. Go. What if it happens? What if this is what finally breaks me on Batman v Superman? And I turn heel on it. I don't think I will, but what if that's what happens? Anyway. As someone I, that, go I'm ahead. sorry, what did you say, Dev? I was not... I didn't like Wonder Woman 2. Let's put it that way. I didn't like the campiness. I didn't. I just don't... It's not me. I like, if you're going to make a live-action superhero movie, I want it to feel like it's in the real world. So that being said, I wasn't looking for, like necessarily like the royal blue and like like the like the tomato red like the super bright colors and like you know like superman but i also wasn't looking for just this begrudging brute, yeah this brute begrudging now do i think that if zod hadn't come this is like a few days removed from clark first ever getting the suit first ever realizing who he is there's a part of me that likes to think that this Superman eventually would have just become a superhero. I don't think that was kind of like where his struggle was. I think the struggle was like, what if the world can't isn't ready for me? And then Zod comes and he's sort of like forced to kind of like, okay, I have to reveal myself. I have to save the world and blah, 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 blah. I feel like the time would have come where again, he would have had to have done that and done something heroic and something like that. And it wouldn't be in this grand scale destruction porn of a movie. And I think he would have become Superman. However, that's not what we got. We can't just go off hypotheticals. And although he does rise to the occasion, like you even see it at the beginning of BVS, like people are very torn on him. He's a, he's a figure of controversy, blah, 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 blah. We all knew that he knew that. And I don't think it needed to be such a struggle for him. Although I do think he would have gotten to that point. I think with the way that they ran the story with his relationship to his father and like all the fear he went through growing up and being completely alone. Clark didn't have a single friend from pre-K to graduation. Are you joking? Like even in Smallville, he was a weird kid that had like one or two friends like well, that's another thing that frustrates me so much is that when talking about the Justice League and why he likes these characters so much, Zack Snyder mentions that he's like, well, I like them because they're all loners who like find their friends in each other. At which point I want to put my head in a blender because no, not all of them are. Clark has Lois and Jimmy Olsen and even Perry White. Yeah. Clark has his people, you know, Diana. Okay. A little bit of a loner cause she's a fish out of water, but you know, she has people who like her and she likes where she's working. At least in the context of the movies. Mm. Sure. I'll give you Batman, but even then he has the bat family. Alfred, like, he has Alfred, you know, cyborg in theory should have the Titans. Aquaman. Okay. I'll give you that to a point, but then he has Mira and you know, uh, I, 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 I can't remember his name, but whomever the hell Willem Dafoe played, whose name something is something with a V Fogo. V something like that. Yeah. The, 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 the character's name is escaped me, but that's not the point. Like all of these characters have somebody. 
Yeah. Like, you know, like when he describes him as loners, like that's not quite the case. You know, like the whole point of the, ju- I mean, for Batman, I do think the Justice League is an important stepping stone for him as a character because in my opinion, it ushers in Bruce when he's at the zenith of his career. Mm-hmm. Because he has the league and a fully formed Bat family, it's whenever Bruce is at his highest threshold of accepting the love and care of other people. And that's when Bruce is at his best, at, not only as a person, but as the Batman. So I'll give him, I will give him Batman, maybe. But you Clark, can have Diana, yeah. Arthur, Victor, the rest of them. Are not loners necessarily. You could show have- them alone. You could show them at a weak point in their life where they are alone. It's just, I feel like they made Superman alone from as soon as he got to Earth to like the minute he meets the minute Lois. He's capturing his loneliness. Yeah, like he, like it was crafted. We're gonna make him a loner. We're gonna make him emo. We're gonna make his father controlling and and instill him with fear and uncertainty and like this concept of the world is not ready for you. Even as a young man, like whenever Pa Kent dies, I mean, Christ, they couldn't de-age Henry Cavill too much. He looks like he's in his early 20s in that part of the movie. Like, (laughs) it's, it's unjustified. I agree. I completely agree on the unjustified thing. And the tone with which the movie, the, the the tone that the movie takes with Pa Kent, especially, that it doesn't feel like because like, like the thing with Clark is that he's raised to just be a good person. He's yeah. raised to be a good Samaritan. Like if Clark Kent was just Clark Kent and did not have all of the Kal El of Krypton going on, if he saw somebody with their car broken down on the side of the road, regardless of superpowers. He would pull over and see how he could help. Yeah. That is the kind of person that Clark Kent is. That moment's instilled with him whenever Ma and Pa Kent decide to keep him as a baby. Because there's someone in need. There's this helpless child that literally just fell out of the sky. And and they take him they take him in to raise him. Like this is supposed to be a compassionate family. This is supposed to be a hopeful family, an optimistic family, a hardworking American in Kansas. We farm family. We have a basic lifestyle. Be a good person. Maybe they have some sort of faith in the comics. I'm not sure. But an overall good being. And it just it just feels so depressing. Yeah, it, it is depressing because you then, like, again, Pa Kent looks at him and he was like, well, what was I supposed to do? Let them drown? Maybe. What? What? Like, like I don't, I don't understand. I truly do not understand this mentality that like maintain your secrecy at all costs. I get it that like as a parent, he's looking out for Clark, but like every other iteration of Superman has found a way to balance. Hey, don't let them know that you're a god, and if your friends are drowning, save them. Yeah. I, they, they, it's it's so it feels so weird and then we get to see clark being superman without you know the s and the cape and all this stuff we we see him doing superman stuff mm-hmm. but at what point did he decide that pa kent was wrong because because like pa kent was always like the world isn't ready like even up until he died, like he gives him the hand because well, now I'm trying to think back to the movie if it really was like world isn't ready versus total secrecy. And I feel like I shouldn't be confused on that line. Like the fact that I am. I, I just it I don't think it works. I and and again, like you can change stuff from the comics and that like again. The MCU changes so much. Yeah. You know, from, you know, minutia down to like huge plot points that are completely different and unrecognizable to the comics. 
Tony Stark did not create Ultron in the comics. Hank Pym did. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So I don't necessarily take umbrage with the fact that they changed they changed the source material. My issue is with the message that it sends. And I mm -hmm. think that with a cultural icon like a Superman, the decision to make him not a symbol of hope, even though they say he is, even though they say that the S literally stands for hope, it feels so desperate and hopeless. You know, this movie doesn't make me want to go, you know, be, uh, be like Superman. It doesn't, it, it does not ev evoke Superman like behavior from its audience. You know, like, yeah, it gets it. it, it, it and I, I don't want to spend this entire review shitting on it. Cause there are some positives here. You know, great performances, I think, across the board. Michael Shannon's phenomenal. Henry Cavill's damn good with what little he gets to say. Aside from the whole movie being told how, like, we're instead of us spending the whole movie being told why Clark thinks what he thinks, we never see Clark act on how he feels uh, mm -hmm. in that sense. But how do I put this? I feel like I'm spending my wills and I sound like an idiot. But there is no, like, shot in the arm of hope, you know? And I think a lot of it comes down to, like, I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to the third act and how that's all framed. Yeah. You know, I, I think that we, we put, the, the movie just feels so dreary and miserable that it does not leave room for that hope. And I get not liking the camp, like what you were saying with 19, uh, Wonder Woman 1984. You know, I, I get not liking the camp. I, I think superhero content is at its zenith when it is about a 50-50 grounded 50-50 camp. And... I, I think that the moments where you lean into comic book silliness while keeping things grounded, I, I again, tonally, I think the MCU it, it is untouchable. Yes. Because it grew up to the point where it went, yeah, this is silly. So let's embrace yeah. how silly and goofy a lot of what we're doing is while still keeping it grounded. And I'm not necessarily just talking about the jokes and that it's funny. I'm talking about like the way that, you know, look all the way in infinity war, just the premise of it alone in a post Nolan post the dark Knight world. They went for a big purple alien who needs shiny rocks that control the universe to kill half the universe and you have, you know, characters ranging from Iron Man to a fully realized Captain America, Doctor Strange. Like, there's this, they embrace how comic booky comic books are. They embrace the camp and the pulp and the silliness. I don't think you can tell a story about Superman and come away from it feeling hopeful when you don't lean into Clark being a baseball and apple pie kind of dipshit. And it's what <laughs> makes him lovable. It's why Clark Kent is a phenomenal character. I think that there's a, how do I put it? I don't remember exactly how I phrase this in the audio commentary, but to me, a story about Superman or his beginnings at the very least should be about him recognizing the good that he can do and choosing to foist that upon himself happily going, yep, someone's got to help people and I'm going to do it because I can do it because 
If not me, who else? I got to do it. And I'm going to be happy doing it. And I'm going to make people happy. I'm going to keep people safe because it's what I can do. And in this, it feels like he kind of like looks around the room, kind of shuffles about and goes, anyone else? No? Marshall no. Manhunter's is like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you, I think you're supposed to be green at something. You? No. All right, I guess I'm going to be Superman. Like, it, 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 that's the vibe I get from this movie and from this narrative. Mm -hmm. That there's like a, oh, well, I guess I'll do it. Not like a, I'm going to help people because I can. And you're right. And it does all this and still has the nerve to do shit like, What's the S stand for? Well, where I come from, it's a symbol for hope. Like, you don't get to have your male get to have both. Yeah. I tr truly, like, lean into it, man. If you're going to go all the way with, like, being Superman is a burden and nobody wants to do this because humanity doesn't necessarily deserve it, shit. Because, like, th that's the implication the whole time. Pretty much. That's, that's, that's how a Krypton ends. As I'm talking about, like, we brought our end upon ourselves and we were too dumb, too dumb, too selfish, and too cruel to stop it. So now here we are and we're all going to die. And again, we, unlike audiences in what, 2012, 2013, when this came out, we get this in the, the when did it come out? Am I right? 2013. That? Yep. 13. We also get we 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 don't get have to have this in a vacuum like when this first came out. We also have Batman v Superman, which also has Martha Kent just straight up say they never deserved you. What? If he's here, he has a responsibility to do what he's doing, and the fact that he loves doing it is a good thing. Yeah. So either yeah, Superman even says in BVS, like no one stays good in this world before like flying away from Lois to go, you know, fight Batman. It's just like, it also comes back to like the hero we need versus the hero we deserve. And like with great justice or great power comes great responsibility. And it's just like, like if you can do what I can do and you don't do anything and then the bad things happen, it's your fault. It's. It feels like they're trying to justify him not being Superman. They're trying to exactly. justify being just like. You can take off the cape. Like, you can put that thing in a in a chest or a trunk somewhere, and like drop it off a bridge. I don't like. It's not very inspiring. It isn't. And again, I, the idea of Superman wanting to be Superman out of pity pisses me off so much. Cause that's what it feels like. It feels like it's out of pity and not out of like a moral responsibility. And the, again, like there's a part of Superman that's like, yeah, I love doing this. Why? Cause I'm helping people. Yeah. And I don't feel like he enjoys helping people here it's like not even until bvs whenever like he's right about to die and he just tells lois like it's gonna destroy this world it's my world and then he like flies in with the spear and everything even then it's just like you kind of miss the damn boat bro and i and don't get me wrong i've said this before and i will continue to say it i like superman christ imagery i do I really, really do. And it has a time and it has a place. And we're not talking about Batman v Superman today, but perfect example. Clark having these like Christ like descents into the flooded town and the way that everybody's like, hu like huddling over him. Clark would not be allowing that to happen. Clark does not want to be seen as an idol. He recognizes 
the fact that he is a breathing symbol, but wants people to be able to see themselves in him and do better. It's not about worship. And the way he is framed in these in these two movies is really weird because it feels like Superman is a like Old Testament God is very like I'm the shit and it is your responsibility to remind me I'm the shit before bad shit happens to all y'all. There's a pity he takes as Superman that I just can't get down with. That really, really, really leaves a bad taste in my mouth. This whole movie left a bad taste in my mouth. You know, I it, it's I, I I again I hate I hate spending this entire review shit talking this movie. But like I really, really went into it thinking I liked it. I I did too, man. I You more than me. I was downright <laughs> depressed after we watched after we did the audio commentary. Like I had to go to my room and just be like talk to my roommates, be like, hey guys, uh that was a rough one. I'm gonna go to my room. Uh, I'll see y'all later. It was just, um, in the spirit of just not shitting on everything. Do you want to talk about what you liked about this movie? Yes. Um, I really like the fight choreography. I know that there is a, uh, like the Kryptonian martial arts. I like how they're like kind of presented here. Um, that it's very like wide hand, like you block with your forearm type shit. Yeah. I like the fight choreography a lot. Um, Superman's first flight. Phenomenal, phenomenal scene. Um, the moments where Clark does feel like Superman um, and this movie feels like it is reverent to that kind of, uh, icon of pop culture and the modern mythology. Um, there are some moments that feel true to that. Um, the way he tries to talk Zod out of the fight, uh, the, whenever he's in the interrogation room with Lois Lane and she's like, well, you'll let him put you in cuffs. He's like, yeah, cause they feel safer that way. Loved that. Mm -hmm. I love the way, you know, when he uses the verbiage, if you're trying to find out where I hang my cape, I'm like, yeah, more of that. Yeah, please. that works for me. Um, Michael Shannon. Know. Michael Shannon. Chewing the scenery. Just what a win. A dream casting. I like. I think he kind of put Zod on the map more. Not just because it's a big blockbuster superhero movie, but because like he made Zod as a character very compelling with this whole like you are born for purposes and like recognizing the council was delusional and that the planet's like dying and everything like that and they refused to do anything to being sent to, you know, prison for the rest of his days to almost dying and then waiting around and around and finally there's a beacon and like, you know, the whole codex thing. I get it. Just some sort of archival artifact of like the planet's history, the registry of citizens, the culture of Krypton. I get it. I'm not a big fan of it though, as a concept. No, I, the concept doesn't work for me either at all. I agree with you. I don't really know what else you would use as far as Zod coming to Earth. Like, I'm not sure what you could use, but it's also not my job to figure this shit out. I, can I just mean, tell you I that it, feel like you can, you know, have there be some type of, oh, hey, this is where Kal-El ended up. And recognizing, like, well, this is habitable for us. And the recognition of how their physiology reacts on different worlds and them going, oh, wow, we're gods here. Like, you can kind of write the whole codex out of this out of this plot completely. Yeah. That, uh, 
Yeah. No, let's do that. Yep. Scratch the codex. Codex is bad. Um, you know, the fight scene, not fight scene, the depiction of Krypton's destruction outside of like the codex stuff. I'm a big fan. I, re I really appreciate it. Appreciated for the first time. I feel like really seeing where Clark is from. I think I liked it so much just from like a unique standpoint. Cause like, I don't, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting freaking 15, 20 minutes on Krypton and we got it. And I, I had fun with it, to be honest with you. I like Russell Crowe. I like everything Michael Shannon was doing. I liked seeing how their government worked and like the kind of creatures that lived on Krypton. And like, I appreciated that from like an aesthetic and just like building a bigger universe in such a small, not small, very large, but building a bigger universe in such like an opening scene to a Superman movie. I like that. Do I like that? Like 50% of this movie is flashbacks. Not really. Not really. If you were, yeah, that's another thing I was saying was that like all of his side gig superheroing, I think you can cut the shit at the diner completely. Lose the stuff at the diner, have his oil rig rescue, have him already be suited up. Yep. Have that Lois Lane is hearing about this mysterious man who saved everybody at an oil tanker. She's already like, like have it known that she heard about this and wants to investigate it. Then like weird shit's happening at the fortress of solitude. Don't necessarily have them meet, have her go. Okay. Stuff's happening here. She starts to try to track down Clark and start. I keep hiccuping. I'm so sorry. Um, she starts to track down Clark, tries hearing all these stories about him saving people. And then you show the first flight as a flashback to how he got here. And maybe that's part of the story he's telling Lois. But how already have him be active as Superman? And I feel like you improve the movie just tonally. Because the whole idea of him accepting his role as Superman has less to do with, well, I guess I got to do it now and more to do with him choosing to do it out in the open. Yeah. And him choosing to simple. Evasiveness and like staying out of the public eye. And like, I'm sure I get that for a while. I just don't think you needed Zod's planetary invasion to conjure the desire to be a Superman, to be a savior. Um, although I didn't care for his character overall, I think Kevin Costner did a great job as Paul Kent. He has a good performance. Yeah. Just, you know, a general yeah. good performance, totally bought everything that was happening, disagreed with the ideologies attached to it. Um, Diane Keaton, a great Ma Kent. She feels loving. She feels She's nurturing. Um, I heard yeah. you struggling to breathe at night. It was so hard for you. I would worry. Like Amy Adams. Good job. Proud of you. Lawrence Fishburne, the drip master. Keeping Perry White fun. Um I cannot wait to make fun of Perry White and Batman v Superman. I'm, Kent, I'm you're on sports today. I'm sorry. Does Clark just not have a job? Does he just show up? How the hell does he get hired? You just got to fake some more documents and like, I didn't realize you were so tech savvy, Mr. Kent. Like, he just looks over and goes, <laughs> headline. End of love affair with man in the sky. That's not how any of this works, Perry. <laughs> we're going to take a headline and we're going to build the story around the headline. Gee, I wonder why sales are down, Mr. Mason. Anyway, <laughs> Mason, Perry Mason, Perry White. Cinematography, you can talk about it all day. Doesn't mean jack shit. 
at the end of the day, though. I will you can, say you can I, study this as to be like what makes a great shot, what makes a great soundtrack, the world engine sound, and like the score. Agreed. Also, comic book movie trope that I miss a lot is that at the end of the fight, the character, a character reaching their like comic accurate outfit as their final form. They do this in BVS with Doomsday. They do it with Zod where like by the end of the fight, he throws off the armor and he's just in like the Terrence stamp style black singlet. I like that kind of shit. I like that shit too. A lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, struggling just, right now, dude. I'm struggling to search for positive things of Man of Steel. I yeah. mean, I don't want to watch it again. <sighs> That's so sad. I just, granted, I took this very personally. Like the movie, I feel like slapped me in the face or maybe like I slapped myself in the face because in my mind it was so glorified back in the day. But knowing how BVS turned out, knowing how Justice League turned out and talking to you about just, you know, concepts in general, I feel just as if not more lost than this movie is. Tonally, character developmentally, Totally just made up that word. Uh, I'm ready to rate this, to be honest. If you have anything else you want to talk about, we're more than welcome. I just Not really, just except for the fact that I do want to say a disclaimer right now that I we are going so hard on Man of Steel, and I know damn well I'm going to... I'm going to have more positive things to say about that movie Superman than I wish I did. Well, yeah, because there's two huge characters you can talk about in Batman versus Superman. I'll give you a hint. They're both in the title. And the, although both of them, <laughs> although both of them tonally, maybe not tonally. Okay. Well, to be honest, 16, no, 15 year old me was very upset that Batman was murdering people left and right. I, I understand it now. 22-year-old me is still really pissed off about that part. I... And nothing feels paid off. Nothing feels paid off of how they set up Batman in that movie. Maybe the Snyder Cut will help something out. Maybe if we get a Ben Affleck HBO Max show, like things will feel paid off. But... Dude, Zack Snyder, I used to look up to you, dude. I used to want to be a film director be like before acting. And like now I'm very concerned for the Snyder Cut. I am very – for those of you like not sure, we are recording this probably right around a week and a half, two weeks away from the release of the Snyder Cut. We're almost exactly two weeks ahead of the Snyder Cut. I am so nervous. I and am this will so be the main nervous. One week. So the, this goes up to patrons. Wait, hold on. I got to, I got to like, this will go out to patrons on Thursday, the 11th. Exactly a week away. It will be exactly a week away. Might drop BVS early on the Patreon feed. Um, and maybe as a bonus episode, in the main feed to Harkin or Harkin in the Snyder cut. Uh, but we will be. Yeah. Stay tuned to the Patreon feed and keep your eyes open. Cause like I said, this is Snyder mode. This is all based around the Snyder cut. So yeah, when you're seeing this in the main feed, this is probably the week of the Snyder cut. Bottom line. I'm scared. Cause I get it. Zach had to leave the project. I get it. No problem. I get it. You bring in Joss Whedon, you should know damn well that Avengers is a very different tone than Batman v Superman. And that might be that you might have recognized that problem with the box office not being the goal of what you would want for these two iconic characters being on the screen at the same time. So sure, you bring in a Joss Whedon, someone that could like 
lighten up things. You know, I like the Flash's humor. I like the Aquaman sitting on Wonder Woman's rope humor. I don't like Batman cracking jokes. Say something. <laughs> no, I think that, listen, I, uh, the biggest problem, with, okay, I got to figure, <laughs> I feel like it's that one line from uh, Alfred and BVS uh, where he's like looking at Doomsday, how to describe, um, how to explain. I think that the biggest problem with the DCEU in its form as it started was stitching together so many disparate versions of these characters to try to have that be the founding class of the Justice League. A Superman, a reluctant Superman, who has just begun his career, and a Dark Knight Returns era Batman, and a Wonder Woman who is just starting out, and an Aquaman who has maybe been active, maybe still starting out, and a Flash who is not officially the Flash yet are not the versions of these characters that can establish the Justice League. So, having Batman in Justice League be a version of Batman, because Batman's kind of a bell curve as a character, right? Because mm -hmm. starts out like like what we see like with Robert Pattinson in the Batman trailer. I'm vengeance. Ba, 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 ba. We, so we have like brutal, brutal sociopath. We start there and then we get a Robin and then we meet Superman and then we start hanging out with the Justice League and oh, hey, the Justice League is a thing and we have a fully formed Bat family and Batman at this point is a hero. I would say arguably he is almost as much of a symbol for hope as Superman is because he has changed his whole bit from being this dark Avenger to a dark knight. A you mean in Justice League? I mean as a character period. Like in the comics, that is the arc Bruce Wayne goes on. Okay. And then let's say, because in the Snyder stuff, we're dealing with a dark Knight returns Batman. So this version of the timeline. Okay. He has falling outs with his friends and Dick wants something to do with him. And the killing joke happens and all this other shit. And eventually being a superhero is outlaw outlawed. And Batman hangs up the cape and cowl, but then he realizes he's addicted to being Batman and he feels powerless. So he starts being Batman again. And it leads to him dying and him having this ugly, ugly fight with his best friend, Superman. And at this point he has, he ends where he started alone, broken and angry and feeling weak. Yeah. Nail on the head. And that is Bruce's worst outcome. Potentially, because these stories will never end, but we'll have different endings, potential endings to the story, like Dark Knight Returns. So we have these two potential outcomes, or we have where he starts and where he ends, and this is like the worst outcome. I love the Dark Knight Returns because it's Bruce's worst case scenario. How the fuck do you decide that the version of Bruce where he is at his lowest, where he is practically useless as a person because he is just a one-man army who wants to do nothing but fight motherfuckers. All he wants to do is hit people. That is Bruce's one character trait at this point. That broken bastard of a Batman is not the same Batman who emotionally is capable of forming the Justice League. Nor can you do, nor can you try to form the father mucking Justice League in the wake of the death of Superman. Yeah, you're, you're there. They are taking stories that are while iconic and while popular cannot coexist with the foundation of the Justice League. None of these characters can be at the tail end or the very beginning of their superhero careers for the formation of the league to work. They need all of them to have done a sufficient amount of self-discovery to be able to make that team function. The point of their stories is the way that they all eventually intersect and the Justice League becomes this network of heroes protecting the world. 
not just Gotham, not just Metropolis, not just Central City, not just Atlantis or Themyscira or whatever, the world. And eventually the universe. They are try- the, the, the DCEU tried so hard to juggle all of these iconic stories when the end game was supposed to be forming the Justice League. Well, you can't have Superman die fighting Doomsday and then form the Justice League. Why? Because Clark isn't there for it, dummy. You can't have the same Batman who's like cool with killing Superman be the Batman who's a founding member of the Justice League. Why? Well, here's another connected question. This fight between Batman and Superman is meaningless unless they have been friends for decades, unless this fight has been brewing since the day that they met, since the day that Bruce realized if he was on level playing field with Clark, he could take his fucking lunch. I feel like it's all brewing. It's supposed to be brewing for years. I love the dark Knight returns and the parts of the dark and the parts of Batman V Superman that feel like the dark Knight returns in a vacuum. I like a lot and it makes me like the movie as a whole. That is the greatest problem with the DCEU. There are too many iconic character changing stories happening at once. I'm going to shut up now. I apologize. It's all right. I agree with everything. Mostly everything that you said. I'd say like 92% of everything that you said. I kind of wish we took the last like six minutes and could just like insert it into the Justice League review. I'm sure once I'm refreshed on Justice League and BVS again, I'm going to have even more to say. Even more to say. I'm probably going to reiterate almost all of that because it needs to be said. That's what I hope you do because it was pretty accurate. So in my opinion, that's why the DCEU failed. I think it became too hard to market these movies that are so goddamn hopeless to begin with. You know, throw in trying to have the Suicide Squad take off. Yeah, like... Oh my god, I'm sorry. This is turning into like a micro... DCEU. Portal of the DCEU. Um, Hey, Jared... yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, do you feel like you could rate this movie? <sighs> There's a lot to like, and uh, to yet again paraphrase high top films, Man of Steel is an okay movie, but it is a very bad Superman movie. It's coming into C minus for me. I was thinking about this earlier today and all right, it's going to be a D plus. Like I decided D plus earlier today as for my reasoning. I mean, I feel like I laid everything out. Uh, misunderstanding Superman. I'd say a pretty poor narrative throughout the film, one that I just didn't want to follow anymore. One that at, by the beginning of the third act, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted because I was the only fucking hopeful one instead of Superman or any other character throughout this film for the most part. And by the end of it, I was just completely sucked dry. It's going to be a D plus. Um, I'm just upset. I don't know what else to say. I don't. Here's what you can say. Where can the lovely people find you? Guys, you can follow me on Instagram at Devin J. Armel and Twitter at Devin Armel one. Jared, where can our lovely yeah. friends find you? Uh, you guys can find me making every excuse under the sun for Batman V Superman at dark Jedi 2552. You can follow the Nerd Academy podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon page. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus who get this show a week early. Case and Breon, The Waffle Wizard, Delta 9, and Zach Canals. You guys help us make the content we love to produce. Be sure to take a look at the $5 tier where you get access to our audio commentaries that tie in a Nerd Academy Movie Club 
Uh, like I said, I I feel very, very comfortable pitching people on the $5 tier for this show because of the Man of Steel audio commentary. That was just a hoot, and uh, I kind of went ape shit by the end because uh, <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, <laughs> be sure to check out the Knights of the Nerd Republic Versus series. Our latest episode, Darth Malgus versus Kyle Katarn, is up there now. And I think on Monday, at time of record, Travis and I are going to be recording our uh, next episode of Heroic History 101. Be sure to check out the student store link on our website where you can get all manner of Nerd Academy merch and goodies, phone cases, t-shirts, hoodies, you name it, we got it with our logo on it and some of our faces. Slap that some bitch on there and rep the Academy. With that, thank you so very much for listening. And...